Aww, geek geek out. Out. <laughs> the year is 2010. Jason has been captured and is set to be cryogenically frozen until a means of destroying him can be discovered. Through chaos, Rowan is accidentally frozen with him and then woken in the year 2455. Before she can come to terms with her new advanced world, Jason also wakes up and begins his reign of terror anew. Can the future finally put an end to Jason Voorhees? So what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Long Night at Camp Blood. This month, this uh, this Friday the 13th, because I made sure to get released on Friday the 13th this time around. Well... We got released on the last Friday the 13th. Whatever. It's Friday the 13th. Clever I hope you're girl. excited. <laughs> and speaking before I even introduce him. Sorry. Here I have friend of the show, Ken. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> We're professionals. Here to talk about Jason X with me. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, Kenneth, if I may call you Kenneth. Um, what do you? What are you, a friend of high school? <laughs> usually, I mean, usually you're, 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 you're nom de guerre, if I may. Um I think that's the right term. Who knows? I think that's your like war nickname. But uh, <laughs> whenever I reference you on the main show, it's yeah. friend of the show Ken. Oh. And when we were doing Laser Dicks, uh-huh. it was it was always friend of the show and co-host of Laser Dicks <laughs> Ken. Uh, so my title doesn't fit on a business card. Nope. <laughs> so it's a Laser Dicks reunion. Aww. Uh Oddly enough, the first Friday the Thirteenth that. Um, I don't know for sure, but it based on release date, the mm-hmm. first Friday the Thirteenth that couldn't have been put on Laserdisc. Yeah, that's right. Is it uh, 2002? Um, uh, ye- in uh, in the U.S., it had its theatrical release in 2002. So there was no way it was getting on Laserdisc. Exactly. Yeah, because that stopped off 2000. I 2000, think. 2001. Well, no, 2001 was uh, Japan. Japan. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, 2000. I don't know. Whenever Sleepy Hollow came out. Which was what? I don't know. 2000. We don't do research. <laughs> I don't. I Preparation? Don't. I, I, <laughs> no. So, Ken, Kenneth, friend of the show, Ken, um, what, uh, what, what, what familiarity are you to Friday the 13th, the franchise, the character, Jason, um, or anything of that matter? I'm going to go on record. Yep. I'm probably the least amount of exposure to. Friday the Thirteenth series of any guests on your show? Oh, oh no! Well, when I did when I did the Friday the Thirteenth the game uh-huh. episode, I believe there were several people because I had a whole group of people on oh, that wow. episode. Nice. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, <laughs> I'm a jerk. <laughs> uh, but no, I had a whole group of people, and I think actually collectively they had seen th- like three of them had even seen Friday the Thirteenth, let alone. Like a number of them, Damn. so uh, so if at, at 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 best you're on par with them. Okay, so my experience, I've seen the entirety of the very first movie, mm-hmm. thanks to a wonderful horror movie marathon that we did mm-hmm. at Halloween a while back. Um, a marathon of one Friday the Thirteenth movie. Well, no, we, we did other. <laughs> we did Trick or Treat. Oh, okay. Oh, so, um, so it wasn't it wasn't a Friday the Thirteenth marathon. It was yeah. just a Halloween movie. Yeah, or I, a horror movie marathon. Exactly. And I think we followed that up with uh, Trick or Treat's a great one. Tr- I love Trick or Treat. That one was good. And then uh, I think it's Halloween, uh, the remake Halloween. Okay, the Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie okay. Halloween. I like that. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not. This is not the podcast. No. Um, other than that, I've wa- I've played Friday the Thirteenth, uh, the video game with you. Um, and then I've caught most of in pieces. I think in I've seen ninety percent of Freddy vs. Jason. And then, and then I of watched, course you've seen this one. And <laughs> I watched this movie. I watched this movie uh later earlier this earlier today. <laughs> in fact. You I watched am, it later today. <laughs> uh, later today. Down to the wire. I watched yeah. it on the Metro and was just and had a great time. Yeah, I remember the last text message I got from you, which was like maybe an hour ago. You were like, yeah. I've still got fifteen minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> still got fifteen minutes left. Yeah. I gotta see it on the way back and I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh yeah, the so so Jason X has a special place in my heart. Oh. I know I know a lot of the classic Friday the thirteenth fans, it's their least favorite one. Mm-hmm. And I understand it. I respect mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. opinion. I just don't agree. Because this one 
well, uh, like even from from get go, like I'm not even. It's not even one of those ones. That's like, well, well, looking back on it, it 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 it, ha- it was having fun with itself, you know, or anything like that. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, fuck it. I I think it's I think it's great. I think it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I think it, it like it is not taking itself seriously. Right. It's like watching an episode of Lex, which I never have, but I it looks it, it looks like it has the same production like uh, quality. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like like a little bit of CG here and there, but it's obvious that it's like. Yeah. It's out of place. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like an episode of Doctor Who if Doctor Who had nipples, <laughs> um, nipples that fall off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, so 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 yeah, this this was a wild ride, mm-hmm. and so many people were like, oh, "I'm not watching that." Well, that was stupid. It has robot Jason or whatever, you know, RoboCop Jason. Um, but you know, <laughs> slice, 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 or <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's, it's not even, <laughs> that was the Terminator theme. Uh, <laughs> well, no, you still did the, <laughs> yeah, but no, but the, the, the rhythm, oh. like it would have been better if I had been doing the rhythm for the RoboCop theme, but I don't uh, know what the RoboCop theme is. It's like some musical notes, I think. You know, I haven't actually the theme, seen the, all <laughs> the musical theme to RoboCop <laughs> is musical notes. Yes. They're in a specific order. <laughs> There's sheet music involved. It, no, it, um, I mean, it has a, um. It, it, I have like ten percent of it coming to me, mm-hmm. and like the other ninety percent is like. Eh. Anyway, okay. if Jake's listening to this, he's like, "It's this." Ah. It's like yelling into his car yeah. stereo. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down, Jake. Uh, Keep your eyes on the road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, let's go over some of the boring stuff. The production notes. So this one, this one, very interesting uh, uh, occurrence here, uh, as far as its release date. Mm-hmm. Only the second movie in the entire series to have an international release. Huh. The first one was the first one. Um, and so, so, so peep this. Not only did it have an inter- international release, only uh, to be fair, only one other country. It was released in Germany mm-hmm. almost a full year before it was released in America. Released in Germany on July 24th, 2001. And then in the U.S. in April twenty sixth, two thousand two. Now, makes no sense. It doesn't. And I tried looking it up, and it, the the best uh, the best I could find um, was uh, that they just couldn't lock down a release date. Huh. For whatever reason, like just it, it, like it was ready to go. Clearly, it was released yeah. in Germany, and there's it's not like there's an international cut and then a you know a totally different American cut. Right. It's just. For whatever reason, New Line Cinema couldn't be like this day, this day. You know. I wonder if there's like maybe stiff competition in the world. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I you know, I don't do research. Yeah. I could have, could have maybe looked up to see like what other horror movies were coming out. Oh, we don't want to go up against. Haba, haba. Was that around the time that the Rob Zombie's first Halloween came out? It was in the two thousands, but I thought it was. I think, but yeah, two thousand six. Yeah, I like was, I yeah, say. yeah. I feel like it was later. Um. Anyway, yeah, because so, I think they said it in mo- like modern day, and it had the date two thousand six. I think mm. I'm going to be really wrong. And yeah, I'm going to eat my words. Yep, <laughs> Rob Zombie listens to the show. Uh, he doesn't. I love your music. <laughs> so, um, so it has a runtime of ninety two minutes, a whopping ninety two minutes, four minutes longer than the previous installment. You get that much many many more killings there. Yeah. Well. We'll get to it later, but it is the highest kill count of all the movies. Oh, my God. Technically, highest kill count of all the movies combined, and oh. I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, but uh, but most most of the Friday the 13th movies have been like just shy of 90 minutes, so mm-hmm. technically this is on the longer side okay. by like a minute or two. Okay. Like most of the movies are around 88 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, this one was written... Uh, sole credit for for writing was given to Todd Farmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was his first major motion picture for writing. But I did look up some of his other credits. After this, he um, kind of well known for for uh, not well not greatly received horror movies. Uh, the Messengers with Kirsten uh, Stewart, the Twilight Girl. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Kristen Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, Kristen Stewart. Uh, My Bloody Valentine 3D. I remember hearing ads for that one. I love it, <sighs> and I enjoyed The Messengers too. Like uh, his other credits, I enjoy, mm-hmm. but they're on par with Jason X. Okay, like not quite as sci-fi, but 
like cheesy. Yeah. Um, and then Drive Angry, the greatest uh, uh, Ghost Rider movie ever made. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> not actually a Ghost Rider movie, but oddly enough, starring Nicolas Cage. <laughs> After the I, I, I want to say it was between Ghost Rider and Ghost Rider 2, or Spirit of Vengeance. Mm-hmm. And then the unmade Halloween 3, oddly enough, just to bring it back to your uh, Rob Zombie Halloween, mm-hmm. the studio was going to do a third uh, a follow-up to his, uh, to, to his two Halloween movies. They were going to do a Halloween 3 that was still set in that universe, but without Rob Zombie. Hmm. It has since been canned. Aw. And now, John Carpenter just recently announced that he's coming back and doing his own version of Halloween 3 from his original universe. Oh. So he's... Uh, well, to be fair. To be fair. Yeah. Halloween 3 from the you know classic Halloween. Halloween 3 is where it diverged and got really weird. Yeah. Uh, and he is acknowledging that. Right. Uh, and he is like, okay, fine. I'm going to do a continuation of the story that happened in Halloween 2, mm-hmm. complete with Jamie Lee Curtis coming back to reprise her role. Aw. Yeah. Like, what, 30 years later? She could play 30, the same. 30 she plus years later. later? Play the same character. It's fine. It's fine. You're not going to know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> they got a to age makeup. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw Tron Legacy. I saw Ant-Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, then uh, Sean S. Cunningham came back for uh, uh, to produce this one. Uh, as uh, listeners will remember, he produced the last one and was, uh, I'm blanking now, I think the writer of the original one. Okay. I know he was involved in the original one. I'm pretty sure he was the writer of the original one. Uh, joining him uh, as producers are his son, Aww. Noel, and James Isaac, who is also the director. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I could not find where the, the this was filmed, but it was quite clear that it was almost entirely filmed on a soundstage or in front of a bunch of green screens. Yeah. Uh, so Yeah, there's literally nothing outside besides yeah. that like fake... Yeah. Scene. Pretty sure it was filmed in Canada because all of the actors are Canadian. That's a good safe bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this one had a budget of eleven million dollars, which is eight fewer than Jason Goes to Hell, but it grossed seventeen million dollars, which was just m- just slightly more than one million more than Jason Goes to Hell grossed. So good on you. Um, and uh, anyone that remembers uh the uh Jason Goes to Hell was the highest profit that uh, New Line had ever gotten or, or or something like that it was their their biggest opening weekend or something mm-hmm. um so this one i i guess was more <laughs> yeah no looking at those numbers well, uh although to be fair that's that's the international with you know with Germany okay. added into it uh but Germany, if I remember correctly from my research, Germany only brought in about $3 million themselves. Oh, okay. So, give or take. Uh, but yeah, so what happened in this crazy movie, Ken? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. What didn't happen in this movie? <laughs> like, uh, as we were talking, like, earlier, like, this, it starts out, it's not directly, like, linked to, like, plotline-wise... Like like plot like we, continuity we, wise, yeah. it could happen after Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, because Jason's. I mean, if you yeah. if you exclude Freddy versus Jason, if, how did he get resurrected? Yeah, if you're if you're an astute viewer, yeah. you're like, wait a second, why is wh- Jason's dead? He's been dragged to hell. I saw the demons go and mm-hmm. pull him down, uh, but he's suddenly alive again. To be fair. That shouldn't stop anyone that's going to see a Freddy, uh, Fre- uh, you know, a, a, a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Yeah, because logic be damned. <laughs> but uh, we're just here for the Kellens. <laughs> and I'll talk about it. I'll probably talk about it a bit more in Freddy vs. J- you know, the next episode with Freddy vs. Jason. But like, mm. to me, the continuity holds up because mm-hmm. so in Jason Goes to Hell, he gets killed, mm-hmm. dragged to hell. Then you watch. Uh, uh, in within the continuity, J- Freddy vs. Jason takes place in between. I don't know the exact year that it's uh, supposed to take place, but it takes place in between uh, Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X. And in that movie, Freddy literally resurrects Jason. You, there's a scene where it, it shows him doing it. 
So that's how he comes back to life. Mm-hmm. Spoilers, the end of Freddy vs. Jason, he doesn't die. He walks away and you know, holding Freddy's head. But and, was it a dream? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> you know, uh, like all that jazz. Um, so <laughs> as, as shaky as the continuity is, it holds up, kids. It's true. It's uh, true. But yeah, so... So Jason's rampaging around. Mm-hmm. Well, not no. He's, well, no, he's, he's captured. He's, he's captured. He's he's like in change. He's sedated for now because they can't figure out how to kill this guy. So they decide we're gonna freeze him cryogenically. We'll deal with this later. Yeah. But then, uh, well, uh, without going into like the minute details, hilarity ensues <laughs> and Jason starts killing people. Oh boy, I just love killing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the 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 female character Rowan traps him in the cryogenic fr- freezer mm-hmm. and then he stabs her through the door which you'd think shouldn't happen but no. it does no. uh so she gets so you know the the cryo gunk starts spilling out freezes the entire room mm-hmm. room goes on lockdown by the way it's amazing that all this technology exists in 2010 yeah <laughs> aren't you so happy that we live in a world where you can just cryogenically freeze anyone exactly well, no, I think they have that, but they just don't know. Can't figure out how to unfreeze them, without, yeah, and keep them alive. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah there's a pro- There's a. There's this little problem with keeping people alive. Yep. Yep. Um. But yeah. So, uh, then fast forward almost five hundred years. Twenty four fifty five. Yeah. Um. I guess almost four hundred years. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and a little bit more than f- whatever. Who cares? Suck it, math. Uh, <laughs> the far future of yeah. 2015. No. <laughs> Welcome to the year of tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but so uh, this school trip is checking out Earth One. Yeah, that that always was weird to me when they were like, yeah, you know, these are interns. They're doing a science expedition. Like, all right, going to like, it, it would make sense like if it was like a recovery crew, like specifically going to Earth to get like, Old stuff is like no, this is field trip. You know, we just do I mean, this. You, you gotta have stupid coeds, man. And there were you, Jesus. Oh man, they they ramped up the stupidity. Like they just in were the like, future, everyone wears skin like skin tight clothing that's cropped off at the navel. I mean that that's. Didn't you ever watch Lex? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even know what show that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably for the best. I'm sure there's someone out there listening that's like, I love Lex. <laughs> Stop saying such bad things about it. I never watched it either. I just saw commercials for hey, it. Hey, I'm sorry, that one guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure my friend Yvonne has like all of it on DVD. Hmm. So sorry if you listen to this. Sorry, Yvonne. Um, so, the, the, so they're in the future. <laughs> they find uh, they find the, the bodies. Yep. And they they get really excited because they haven't found anything so old before. Yeah. So and they want to take them back. And especially to, something that's a still a, a still... Uh, able to be recessed save the stabbing but yeah. you know sta- and it's the far future stabbings you know for chumps yeah it's chump change yeah. somebody saw- literally yeah the open like the opening the first not like stabbing yeah like the guy loses an arm yeah and it's like oh yeah. that's no big deal accidentally tips over jason yeah. and his and his machete just chops off his arm unconscious this man can still kill yeah <laughs> yeah and they're able to just slap it right back on him uh, so they they resuscitate Rowan, mm-hmm. and inadvertently resuscitate Jason, and he goes on a killing rampage on their spaceship mm-hmm. that they've gone that they've hopped back onto because they have to go back to Earth two, the sequel where electric Bo- <laughs> where the Justice Society <laughs> is <laughs> reigns supreme. Oh my god! It's a comic book reference, kid. <laughs> In DC Comics, our Earth with the Justice League is Earth One, oh. and the Earth with the Justice Society is Earth Two. That explains. This is pre-Crisis stuff. Don't worry about it. I think I actually have Infinite Crisis at home. I do. I don't. I haven't read it. I'm not a DC guy. It's pretty good. You should read it. It's got a shit ton of minor characters that you've never heard of and don't give a shit about. Do they die? A lot of them do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But it's got a cool cover by Alex Ross. So, oh, that's uh, right. So thanks, Alex Ross. He's a cool guy. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> and it's where we get the iconic, no, uh, Superman holding dead Supergirl. Spoilers, she dies. Um, well, I mean, we just said a bunch of people die. Yeah. But she's like one of the major characters that dies. Anyway. Back to the topic at hand. 
So, yeah, so they have to get back to Earth 2, Planet Bob, uh, for those of you that watched. Oh, what fucking movie was that? Is it After Earth? Titan Titan A.E. Yeah. Titan (laughs) A.E. Bob. (laughs) What are you going to call it? Bob. Bob. (laughs) And then the subtitle is uh, uh, Earth 2, parentheses, Planet Bob. Uh, Man. I love that movie. Uh, I feel like I've only seen it once, but I love it. I think, yeah, I've only seen it once as a kid. I need to rewatch it. Yeah, we should watch it. Uh, so, animation so, podcast. Let's go. Yeah, uh, you got one. Uh, but so they, uh, they, they're they're on their way back to uh, to Earth too. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jason runs amok. Mm-hmm. Like he does. Yeah, like he does. Killing them off one by one, sometimes two by two. Uh, with some very creative deaths. Like, I gotta say, like, a lot of people give this movie shit, uh, but I, from day one-ish, mm. uh, that's a wrestling reference, mm. uh, uh, since day one have been saying, like, nah, man, these kills are actually really cool. Like, say what you will about the rest of the movie. I'll probably agree with you, mm-hmm. but liquid nitrogen kill? Come on. Head desk? Pow! Yeah, um, that that like I would agree. Like that's yeah. by far like my favorite, mm-hmm. my favorite kill in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, just because like the, it's so quick yeah. that you don't have time to register that it's not a real head yeah. when they when he pulls it out. It just it immediately goes like, oh wow, it's shattered now. Yeah. Uh, then you got the the dude falling on the uh, giant drilling screw, which I oh, fucking love, and he that just was cool. He just loops around. And because Jason is a silent killer, you have his like uh, whatever person that found him with the one one liner. It's like he's screwed. Yeah, oh, I hated that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love it. Uh, uh, what was there was there was at least I uh, the the sleeping bag kill is a callback to an old kill from really yeah, but. In the, in the original, it's actually I think it's from Kane Hodder's first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jason lives? Question mark. Um, That's the title. Jason lives? Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> uh, but mm-hmm. uh, but he kills a girl in a, in a, who's in her sleeping bag mm-hmm. by you know like beating her on the ground and then slamming her against a tree. Mm-hmm. In this movie, they one up it because he's using the one girl to beat the other girl to death and then slams her on the the tree. Uh, so, so that was fun. Uh, and then, you know, space stuff too. Like, uh, uh, so Je- uh, what the hell is her name? She has, she's got a dumb name. Je- Janessa. Janessa. They all had really like traveler or like tra- some of them, some of them were like Dallas and, <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, Janessa, the girl with the, the, the shirt that, uh, had the, Oh yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah, the like the just the split the Moses yeah. water split yes. down the yeah. chest. Uh one of my favorite characters in the movie. All uh right. and she had probably one of uh one of the more interesting kills as well because mm-hmm. she got sucked through uh a, a breach through a grate. That bothered me so much. Why? Because Jason clearly punches through. Yes. Where did the grate come? Oh, was it the grate no, that she, she yeah. lifted? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, that that just bothered me, though, because just, like, there wasn't a grate there before. Yeah. Where'd the grate come from? Yeah. It's also the way that they killed off the alien abomination in Alien Resurrection. Except without the grate, it was just a hole that... Mmm, tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for feeding me all these killers. Yeah. Uh, which is not the only reference to the Alien franchise that's in this movie. Oh. Uh, well, I can imagine they've got mo- a lot of opportunity to do it, be it set in space. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so, so they, they, the, he kills almost everyone on the ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. How many survivors are we left with? Two and a robot head. Yeah. Uh, and then the pilot of the distress ship or whatever you call it. Yeah, but uh, he wasn't part of like the. Cast. No, he wasn't. So I don't count him as a survivor. Yeah, um, he's not in Destiny's Child. <laughs> um, he ain't going to be in Rush Hour Three. <laughs> <laughs> Was Destiny's Child in Rush Hour Three? No, I don't even think I've seen Rush Hour Three. I just like that quote from Rush Hour Two. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's this. There's this bit where uh, like in the bloopers. Or something? Yeah, it's the bloopers oh, okay. where they knock him down, and Chris Sawyer's like, "Damn, he ain't going to be in Rush Hour 3. And Jackie Chan is just like, "I can't." I can't. I can't deal. That was really good. <laughs> I I I unashamedly love those movies. They're fun. They're yeah. fun. 
I, I should own them. I should rewatch them. Hey, let's rush hour podcast. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> we have enough to See do a, like six. Wait, how many? Uh, three. There's three. <laughs> then we'll just do Shanghai. The Shanghai. Shanghai series. noon and Shanghai nights. <laughs> just as as a because yeah. they're side companion by side. Piece. They're like really the companion yeah. piece movies. They're basically the same movies. Or they they basically exist within the same universe. Exactly. You just replace Tucker, uh, Chris Tucker, with Owen Wilson. Yeah, Owen Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just Jackie Chan doing Jackie Chan stuff with an American director, so he's not really doing Jackie Chan yeah. stuff. Yeah, I've, I've, I, I can go on a see rant. the Foreigner. Oh heck of, yeah, that comes out this weekend. <gasps> I'm gonna go see it soon. Yeah. I hope. I got my movie pass card finally. Oh, I can go see it for for cheaps. Yeah, yeah. That's not a plug, but yeah. that's an interesting deal. Look I it do, up. Yeah, I do. I I I I've only used it once, but so far it's been pretty cool. Nice. Anyway, anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so he's there killing. Yeah, he's killing all the folks. Yep, they uh, they they th- the uh, dude gets so dude. One of the dudes has a robot assistant, mm-hmm. sex slave, just like Morty. Nah. Um. Oh, jeez, Rick. Ugh. But I uh, just want something to remember you by. That's so gross. Ugh. Uh. But so, dude gives him an upload, not an upgrade, apparently, but an upload. It's the future. They can have weird slang, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shway. Everything, everything, everything's more or less the same. But instead of an upgrade, we call it an upload here. Uh, just screams the, of like old man. The upload to, means his semen. <laughs> uh, just screams of old man being like, I know what the kids are into. Oh man, they're always, <laughs> they're always getting their uploads. Uh, anyway, uh, so she's now a Matrix style badass. Oh uh, gosh, that flips the flips that could kill. Yeah, uh, and like dominates Jason mm, left and right. Just in, in into the medical bay, mm-hmm. slams him on the nanobot tray. Which we didn't we didn't go into detail, but that was how they kind of resurrected Rowan uh, with nanobot technology. Yeah, I mean it's established pretty early on that like not only can they resuscitate you, they can like repair ligaments mm-hmm. and just yeah. Re- it's it's how it's how dude got his arm reattached. It's mm-hmm. how she got. Her, uh, her, her machete wound healed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's not just like we found a reason to resurrect Jason. Yeah. Like uh, it was established, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, that. I, I, I do enjoy forethought. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the only reason why Rowan was in the opening scene too, uh, because typically this is the first time in the entire series that the uh, that a character in the cold open mm-hmm. is featured in the rest of the. Bo- uh, excuse me, I'm. I've been trying to stifle burps the entire uh, recording, and that one got away from me. No, but, let uh, let it fly. Make this the Rick and Morty <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, after after the whole Szechuan sauce fiasco, uh. I'm be- I, I've decided to get more closeted on my Rick and Morty fandom. You uh, could be, you could be a fan of cartoons. You just don't have to be so like enveloped with the fandom. It, no, that that's what I'm saying. I'm I, I'm trying. I'm stepping away from the fandom mm-hmm. because it, it 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 is fandom with a B. Mm. Uh, Mm, clever I yeah, like it right <laughs> uh, and a U uh, <laughs> nobody spells right here nope uh, but so 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 then because of their negligence of moving or not moving I guess the body the nanobots turn back on and resuscitate him and make him uber Jason and that is his actual name in the script it's in the credits it's in the credits Kane Hodder is credited to both Jason and and Uber Jason, as if they were different characters. Oh uh, <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, mm-hmm. J- uh, uh, Jason, <laughs> <laughs> Shredder, and Super Shredder were two different actors. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know who regular Shredder was, but Super Shredder was wrestler Kevin Nash. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and veteran of the Magic Mike series. So, of course, they need to get somebody with a bigger frame. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh so 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 Uber Jason reignites his rampage mm-hmm. just as they call a distress signal and uh they they have a ship coming to him. Uh they decide to blow up half the ship. Or not I was a little one, shaky on the reason why it, like it, the shields were failing. If I if I remember correctly, the the uh, the integrity of the ship as mm-hmm. a whole mm-hmm was compromised Mm -hmm. but that the the other half of the ship was 
in itself, like if they could contain it, mm-hmm. was perfectly fine. Okay. So they to save to save them, they destroyed half the ship. Okay. Or they separated from the 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 they they cut off the infected hand. Right. To save the rest of the body. Okay. So so that buys them a little bit of time. There's a scuffle in in doing that. We lose a guy to self-sacrifice mm-hmm. to try to save everyone else. Jason still survives through the explosion, makes it into the the, the good part of the ship while they're escaping onto this uh, dinghy mm-hmm. that the guy is rescuing them on. And then Jason plummets to Earth in a fireball of rage. Uh, ah. Yeah. And we don't know if he survived. His but, mask sure did. Heck yeah. I mean, if that's the only piece, that's the only piece. But, yeah. you know, the, he's been through worse. You know, I'm wondering if the has, dude... Th- has he been through worse I'm wondering than re-entry? <laughs> I mean... I've uh, seen the rest of... Well, I guess being dragged to hell is probably worse than that. And he lived through... Well, ultimately lived through that. <laughs> my question is, does the, the the guy that was in the spacesuit survive? Because, I mean... Brodsky? This, yeah, I'm wondering if he survives because, like... Uh, according, according to the official kill count of the movie, he did not. Oh. And also, that suit was totally not rated for reentry. Okay, I was about to say, if you've got, like, entire Uber Jason protecting you, I don't know. That's, that's true. I don't that's, know, man. That's true. Maybe Uber Jason was his heat shield. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 There's no way... Even if he did survive re-entry, there's no way that he landed in a way that he is did not become paste. Exactly. Jason maybe could have survived that because... It's Jason. It's Jason. Yeah. He's got a knife It for doesn't surviving. need logic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you know what? To be fair, I'll get into it a little bit later, but he did survive. Uh, but that's not official canon. Oh. Uh, but so... <clears throat> Let's get some details. Yeah, let's get some let's get some pre production and production and even some post release. Not post production, but post release. No, actually there is a an post it's a uh a post production detail that I have here. Uh but most of it's post release. Anyway. Uh so in the years following the release of Jason Goes to Hell, uh Mr. Cunningham continued to push for the idea of a Freddy vs. Jason crossover film. But for whatever reason, it took. It was getting close to ten years, and there was no crossover uh, between between the two juggernauts. So, uh, in an attempt to maintain audience interest in the character, he was like, "All right, fine, let's just do another solo movie." Enter his buddy Todd Farmer, and they had some sort of relationship, wor- some sort of working relationship uh, before this. But I didn't go too far down the Todd Farmer rabbit hole, but I know that Tom Farmer had been working with Cunningham since the mid nineties. Okay. So they, they had been working together on something. Um, but then, so Todd Farmer was the one who pitched the, (laughs) the, 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 apparently Cunningham and a couple other guys had been like, well, what, uh, their, their, their template was Jason goes to blah. And, uh, like they were coming up with stinkers, you know, Jason goes to camp, Jason goes to Africa. Ah. These are all earnest movies. Um, <laughs> but Todd Farmer comes in with his one and only pitch. Guys, 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 guys. guys. Jason goes to space. Listen to me. Listen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can see Now you. I know what you're thinking. I know. It, I, I Think about it. Don't think about it. Uh, it's the only... I, I know you want to do a Freddy vs. Jason movie. So you got to think about the continuity. Let's not do anything that's going to mess up that continuity. Let's set it in the future. And where are we going to be in the future? Fucking space. Space bitches. So so uh so somehow Farmer convinced Cunningham and Co to go with that idea and um and 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 Farmer uh started penning the 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 script outline which uh featured or uh, the, the, the borrowed heavily from the first alien movie Ridley Scott's Alien mm-hmm. all the way down to naming a character Dallas who Farmer then subsequently played Ooh. uh sp- and speaking of interesting casting David Cronenberg mm-hmm. again uh for for I don't know how familiar you are with David Cronenberg himself but as a Rick and Morty reference the Cronenberg universe 
You or, totally Cronenberg that up, man. Yeah, that it's his staple of his movies to like have weird monster okay. creature abominations like that. David Cronenberg was cast as Dr. Wimmer, who in the opening scene, he's the guy that's like, no, nah, I'm not going to freeze him. I'm just going to transport him. They, I need to experiment on him, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, and, and Cronenberg was in it because uh, Isaac, the director, used to be a protege of him. And uh, uh, one quick factoid, Cronenberg agreed to it on the stipulation that he gets an on-screen death. Nice. And he fucking did. Yep. Because he gets impaled by a hook thing. Uh, people, uh, astute fans uh, of listening, astute music fans, might notice that Harry Manfredini is back to compose the, the score. Uh, if my tally is correct, and I didn't do the research, so it could be way off, but uh, that means that he has been part of every single movie so far. That's 10 movies. Oh Good on him. Oh my gosh! Because uh, I mean, at the end of the day, like they're all still like you still need that creepy vibe mm-hmm. like throughout, regardless of like the theming mm-hmm. of the movie. So. And he 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 modifies it to sound kind of futuristic, but if you're listening, you can still hear the same basic theme there that's been there since day one ish. Uh, again, another re- wrestling reference. It's the it's it's not paranoia. It's wasted on me. I'm sorry. It's the Usos. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm just not a wrestling fan. It's fine. It's fine. We'll be over here. It's fine. I'll talk to Maddie. She's a wrestling fan. She she enjoyed it <laughs> once. <laughs> she likes John Cena. <laughs> uh, you can't see me. Yeah, well, she can go watch the next Transformers movie. Yay. <laughs> but uh, so speaking of music, though, <laughs> speaking of music, uh, Drowning Pool's Bodies was used in the trailer because why the fuck not? It's the new metal era of horror movies. Where Heck, every yeah. fucking horror movie that came out over the like you know that like ten year span mm-hmm. had had to have a soundtrack full of new metal bands. Didn't uh, I think the remake to Halloween did too? I remember Halloween. Doo, doo. I, I sure. I enjoyed it. That was fun. <laughs> Halloween. Hey, Halloween. Oh, that's the Misfits version, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it had a new metal version on that because it was right in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. Whereas this was still kind of in the early stages of it. But actually, who knows, might even be the thing that caused it. Uh, because that song isn't actually featured in the film at all. Just in the trailer. Um, and thank God. <laughs> you don't like it much? I don't, I, don't, I don't like new metal horror movies. Which is funny because I fucking love Freddy vs. Jason. Ah. And it is all new metal. I mean, it's got original... Uh, score in it as well but whatever uh as mentioned earlier it had uh, this is the first international release since the uh, the uh, first film and was uh, released in germany almost a year earlier than in the u.s seemingly just because they couldn't lock down a u.s release date those jerks yep currently or at least uh currently as far as the wikipedia article that i stole a lot of this information from uh scandalous yeah <laughs> It holds a solid 19% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. And Ebert, Roger Ebert, is quoted as saying, This sucks on so many levels. I love it how he quoted the movie. That was... Yeah. That was yeah. Sh- oh my uh, God. Janessa's death line. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, UK magazines and... Uh, UK magazines Total Film and Empire gave it favorable reviews, though. And it uh, in in recent years, younger audiences and people looking back on it now can appreciate its self-deprecating humor and inventive kills, Name. namely the liquid nitrogen head desk. And I put myself in that category, you know. Like yeah. I, I'm n- I, I would guess you would count as a younger fan, just uh, because I, I just because you're being introduced to it now. I would say so. Yeah, and also, I mean, you you you're you're uh, like just chronologically period you're probably at the older end of what would be considered the quote-unquote younger fan because you're not quite 30 no you're not quite a man not quite a woman i'm turning uh 29 this uh saturday man yeah i would say i would say like 30 and above is like the age range of like Mm -hmm. the classic fan or the older fan i saw this in theaters yeah i did not but i was old enough to almost old enough to um because i was 16 the year that it came out okay i had actually just turned 16 because my birthday is april 17th um and it was what 26th did i is that what i said yeah 
So I, I, I had been 16 for nine days. Uh, but, uh, so, so I, I guess I, I, I well, it's, technically, no, it's, I mean, it was R rated, so I needed to be 17, but you could get yeah. a parent. Yeah. Sneak you in. Yeah. Freddy vs. Jason was the first, uh, movie of either franchise that I saw in theaters faux show. Nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Uh, so speaking of the liquid nitrogen kill though, mm-hmm. that kill in particular was so popular that, uh, shortly after the movie's release, the Mythbusters actually tested it on their show. Nice. Unfortunately, proving that it is physically impossible, but damn cool to look at. Mm. Uh, I actually watched the episode. So their 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 whole thing was positing that uh, it, within the movie, he sticks her head under the water or liquid nitrogen for about five seconds, mm-hmm. slams it on uh, the desk. They were like, "That's." Their experiment showed that that wasn't long enough to freeze it, freeze the head enough to shatter it. All the way through, yeah. And even having something submerged for 15 minutes wasn't enough to shatter it like that. So T-1000, she ain't. Did they find out? ever find out how long it would take? Uh, no, I don't think they uh, had enough heads. Eh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I think they were like, after 15 minutes, we were able to like... Uh, effectively like break its nose mm. uh but so uh fun fact fun facts i love them least censored movie of the franchise oh yeah uh so every single one of these movies needed to have x number of minutes cut out of it in order to get an r rating as opposed to like an x rating or nc17 rating right this one only needed seconds cut huh. out of it um and also it is the most directly spun off entry in the franchise. Now, occasionally you'll have like characters that have like spin off books and stuff like that, but this one legit like they were like, We are taking Jason X and we are continuing that story kind of thing. As yeah. opposed to just like, here's a Tommy Jarvis story, here's a random Jason story, you know, like stuff like that. No, I think I was re- reading a bit about that, where they had the novel series that mm-hmm. were specifically, let's retell it, let's tell a little bit more, yep. let's keep being going further. Yeah, and uh, those are those are like out of print. Yeah, black. Uh, it, it's uh, it's it's a publisher called Blake Flame Publishing. Mm-hmm. They put out five books uh, that range from, like you said, a novelization of the movie, all the way to like you know uh, science experiments gone wrong to build super soldiers. And him terrorizing an all-girls camp on the moon. I read that and I was just like, of course he does. Yeah. Like... I totally want to read these books. Oh uh, and, and they probably would have made more had the publisher not closed. And yeah, now the uh, the books are super collectibles to fans of the franchise. Also, there have been a slew of comics, uh, including you know, or, uh, the... the, the, the are direct spinoffs of Jason X and also just including the Uber Jason uh, as uh, notab- most notably an, uh, a comic book that pits a resurrected OG Jason versus Uber Jason. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, wow. 125. For just one book? Rare first printing, Friday the 13th, part six. Uh, oh, okay, this is just Jason Lives. Man, uh, I'm trying to find it, but... Uh, There's the cover of Jason X. Is that it? The 13th Sacrifice? That one. Huh. Oh, but that's the movie. Yeah. Jason Lives on Jason X. We can look it up later. We, we uh, the, it up the, later. the Wikipedia article had the actual titles of the books. Oh, all right, great. So I might I might use that later because yeah. I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, so so here are the, uh, the, the dumb facts uh, that I like to gather for, for each of the movies. So all the all the fr- Friday the Thirteenth movies are well known for their cold opens, mm-hmm. and I like to measure how long those cold opens are. This particular installment, the cold open was nine minutes and thirty seconds long, mm-hmm. ten minutes shorter than the longest of the series. Um, the location in universe that the story took place starts off at the ca- uh, Crystal Lake Research Facility, that- presumably on Crystal Lake. That I, I just I'm in disbelief that Crystal Lake can get like the the funding to have its own research. Well, facility. here's 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 the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, again, uh, you as an avid listener to the show know mm-hmm. this already, but at this point, the FBI have gotten involved in the investigation of Jason Voorhees. Right. So I believe that they have just put 
a research facility at Crystal Lake because they know that that's the epicenter of this shit. Okay, that's fair. Um, and also, uh, that's kind of a spinoff. I don't know if it's intentional, but it's kind of a spinoff of an original idea for the story of Jason Goes to Hell where a lone um, medical uh, researcher, scientist type, mad scientist type guy sets up his own rogue uh, lab in a in a derelict cabin at Crystal Lake to resurrect Jason in Jason Goes to Hell. Okay. Uh, I don't know if, it, like, like I said, I don't know if it was intentional uh, or if it just happened to, you know, work work out that way. But so that that happens, uh, and then uh, so jump to the future, uh, and we're chilling on the Grundle or not the Grundle, the Grendel, the Grendel, uh, which is a reference to the uh, monster from Beowulf. And then finally, for like two seconds, we're on Earth Two, Planet Bob, <laughs> Earth Two, Planet Bob. Uh, timeline. This one takes place uh, it, uh, for for the first ten minutes. It's in two thousand ten, and then for the rest of the movie, it is in the year twenty four fifty five, making it the biggest time jump of all of the movies. Um, but yeah, uh, fun fact, Ken. Oh, uh, so so Jason takes Manhattan was made in like what nineteen eighty six or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Takes place in like two thousand one. Really? Yeah. Uh, completely uh, not paying attention to it at all uh, in the script wise, but yeah, just the way that the way that the time hops. I'll explain it to you off mic because these guys that are listening to this have probably already heard it. But uh, but yeah, there's some mad time hop. That's one of the reasons why I always keep track of the timeline because of how much the the, the timeline jumps around. <clears throat> what is this a Marvel movie? No. Yeah, uh, kill count. Jason in this movie kills 20 people. Technically 23 people die, but three of them are either accidental deaths or uh heroic suicides. Mm-hmm. Uh so Jason doesn't get the credit. Uh which means uh Jason's total number of kills throughout the whole series is 124. Mm-hmm. And then the total number of uh of of kills in, uh, uh, throughout the series, because there are two movies where Jason is not the killer, is 148. And then, uh, Ken, you might notice in my notes there, I also have a plus 20,000. Is that because of the, what the ship crashes into? Yes. So <laughs> the the ship, the ship at one point, the Gren, the the Grendel, uh, crashes into the Solaris space station, and it is uh, it is not said. How many people were aboard the the Solaris in the movie? But uh, the director has since said that there's in the ballpark of twenty thousand people, probably on the Solaris space station, which is completely destroyed when Jason kills the pilot of the Grendel, and then the the ship subsequently crashes into the Solaris. I just can't believe it can be taken out by a single ship. Like that I mean, hit a lot of things. It might have hit the power reactor. I mean, it hit a dome for sure. It went yeah. straight through the dome, but I thought yeah. that was the major thing that it hit. Yeah. Okay. No, but it but somehow caused a chain reaction to explode everything. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, because it did explode. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, no, every single person that was aboard the Solaris died. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, so that's why I said earlier that this has the highest kill count in the entire series combined oh. uh, because technically... 20,000 people died in this movie uh, indirectly by Jason's hands. So I, I, I have an asterisk next to it because he didn't actually like kill them, kill them. It's not on screen. Well, the explosion was on screen. What I'm saying is he didn't go chop. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. Um, because that's what he does. Every time he kills someone, he says you dead. I honestly would have loved it if he had some sort of voiceover. Yeah. He slides into frame. Hey, what's up guys? <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I love about Jason is that he never talks. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, one of the things that I love about Freddy Krueger is that he constantly talks. Like he's like Spider Man or Deadpool, like with the shit talking that he does. You can run, but you can't hide, bitch. Just like that. Exactly. Like um. That. So Ken, yes. What was your favorite kill? Ooh. Well, I have to agree with uh, everyone's sentiments. The 
the uh, the cold uh, what was liquid, liquid nitrogen head liquid desk. nitrogen the liquid nitrogen head desk that was a pretty good shot just one two punch you can't even tell that like it's a fake thing because yeah. it's just so fast on screen okay well that's the one that I have written down but since you picked it I'm going to go ahead and lateral over to my second favorite kill right. just so we can give a little credence Clearwater revival to it mm-hmm. um, the, uh, the 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 screw kill. Oh, yeah. Where where he just goes, me, you know, uh, he's been screwed. Yeah, that's always my second favorite kill. So, you know, let's give it up for that. Whoop whoop. Um, Ken, yeah. What was your least favorite kill? Ooh. So, I'd have to say, the the bit where uh, Jason comes across across the two guys enjoying their little vidge games. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I thought the kills in the video game were awesome. Just getting the whole T-1000, like, mm-hmm. chop in there where he's split apart. And I thought, oh, that's really cool way to die. And they're just going to try to fix him back up because they have the technology. Yeah. No, it was a virtual one. And then they, what, they bash his head and they get, they break his back. Yeah. Like, the whole Batman bit, like, it was not It was kind of anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. Like, you have this gruesome in-game deaths and then what? Like, oh, I slammed you down and sorry I sl- that real life isn't as cool as a video game exactly you know i <laughs> wish it was give me the superpower yeah. but yeah like just the the juxtaposition of awesome death versus kind of lame death i didn't appreciate that much okay i can okay i can respect that oddly enough my least favorite death also within that realm mm-hmm. um but i was uh specifically the other guy who gets his head slammed into a wall mm-hmm. uh two prong reason why that's my least favorite death one the stuntman that took that hit actually broke his nose in 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 the stunt, and two, we've seen that death before, and it was cooler in the other movie. Unlike the sleeping bag kill, where I say it's cooler in this movie, the the slamming a head into a wall was way cooler in the movie with the RV, uh, where uh, Jason slams the girl's head into the wall, and you see her face imprint come through on the other side of the wall. Yeah, that's a lot better. Yes. So. Each one of these movies has a killing spree, Ken. Did you know that? I can figure. I mean, I f- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I say, um, so as far as I'm concerned, the killing spree starts right when Jason wakes up, uh, specifically with Adrian's uh, liquid nitrogen head desk mm-hmm. kill right about at the 31 minute mark mm-hmm. and goes, where did I mark it as having ended, uh, to crutch uh, who is the, uh, the 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 pilot who gets elec- uh, it, uh it says that he gets electrocuted on his pilot console i'm pretty sure he gets sliced and diced well yeah cuz like they happen upon his body later and they're like oh yeah. what a bad way to go i've seen worse <laughs> yeah mm, go fuck yourself uh but that happened uh, about the 1 1 hour 5 mark uh and then like after that point like it kind of it didn't quote you know it didn't quite slow down per se but like that's when the ro- you know, Cam comes in and kicks the shit out of Jason. Then he turns into Uber Jason and stuff like that. So like the killing spree kind of ended. They uh, were, so they were more like thought out. I guess more dramatic. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it it was more. Uh, like in this in this movie, there were so many just deaths for death's sake. Exactly, uh, and that's and that's they literally have a place with, that has like bloody instruments just hanging about for the sole purpose of killing people. Yeah. So like that's and so that all goes into what is the killing spree. So killing spree itself only lasted about 34 minutes. Which is fine. That's about average for these movies. Hmm. The uh, what was it? Uh, I think Jason goes to hell. I was just like fuck it the entire movie is a killing spree. Ha. Uh because none of the you didn't you didn't give a fuck about any of the characters. You know what I'm saying? Like at least in this one like they kind of tried, you know. I mean, but like in the last one I had trouble remembering who, like in Jason Goes to Hell, I had trouble remembering who the main characters were. No, I I, I got that a little bit in this movie. Like, I, it definitely was like, okay, you have brown hair and you're obsessed with sex, I guess. You're a blonde scientist. The only one that it really stuck out was that, okay, you're the robot dude that's hor- like horny for robots. Yeah. And then I don't like real girls. I just like the ones you can plug your USB port into. Ugh, I don't like nipples. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Rowan, yeah, uh, just just like because her, uh, she visually like well, like she's always out of, out of place. Like, oh, what does that mean? Explain yeah. that to me in layman's terms. Ah, I'm from 2010, where the 
peak of the pinnacle of technology is cryogenic freezers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you should you should have seen Star Trek at that point, lady. You can understand the technology she, they use in this movie. What, she does say, "Can't we just beam?" Yeah, somewhere. I love that bit. It's like traveling through hyperspace and like dust and crops, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, survivors. Speaking of Rowan, mm-hmm. she survives, and so does Sunarin, who is the the robot guy, and the head does. But yeah, that, that's a robot. That's a robot. It has a soul, though. Was this Blade Runner? <laughs> uh, what's this ghost in the shell? Uh, who plays Jason? Kane Hodder. What a For guy. his fourth and final appearance in cinematic world of uh, Friday the 13th. I specify that because he is the mocap ca- uh, actor for uh, Friday the 13th, the game. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Good for him. Uh, and then uh, Evolution of Jason. So this one probably has the most drastic evolution of him since he was resurrected from the dead Mm -hmm. uh in this one right off the bat he has a new hockey mask that hockey mask that he's wearing in the beginning of the movie Mm -hmm. is fucking different which i don't know i i I don't know where he got it but uh it's it's different i actually think it looks pretty cool uh a lot better than the fucking jason goes to hell hockey mask Mm. but the, the whole costume for jason and jason goes to hell sucked Mm. um and then halfway through the movie, he gets nanobot cybernetic upgrades, oh my God. making him Uber Jason. Oh, my God. And so, see, look, I understand. I can believe your world of nano nano machines, like resurrecting people and connecting and doing limbs and reconstructing bodies. How do they have a sense of style just to be like, okay, uh, we can sense this plastic mask here, so we're going to give him a metal mask. Like, oh, like, we're going to give him a whole metal body with this, like, menacing, like, cybernetic feel to it. Like, when did nanites have senses of style? I don't know, man. I feel like this is something that was ripped right out of an anime. (laughs) You like animes. It's just like one of my Japanese animes. Shut up, Otacon. Sure. Uh, So, weapons used. This one was one of the more inventive uh, Jasons because this is a long list of weapons. Got a chain, hand. That chain was pretty cool. In the yeah. Film. A noose pole, mm-hmm. which is what impales David Cronenberg. Metal door, liquid nitrogen, space machete. It was actually specifically a space machete. Uh, his Every own, operating room in space needs a space yeah. machete. His own knee, a wall, a large mining drill, a hook, or by crook, a pilot console, mm-hmm. and a metal gate... Uh, or great, sorry, a metal grate. And then uh, Earth's own gravitational pull. Yeah. Uh, although I guess technically, like I said, technically that doesn't count because it was a heroic sacrifice. But uh, I, I still liked it. Did the victims deserve to die? Uh, when I started this, I was like, oh, Friday the 13th movies have their own like uh, code of morality. So I like set up, they're like, oh, this this person... Deserves to die because they had sex. This person deserved to die because they're an asshole. This person deserved to die because they're, you know, a druggie. That has gone out over, the window. Well, over the last uh, couple movies, that has kind of gone off the rails. Most of the people that uh, died in this movie, I categorized as my innocence. Although halfway through, I was like, I need to like switch it up to like hero or something like that because like most of these people. They they were innocents in 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 the terms that they didn't fuck they didn't uh, they they weren't dicks and they didn't you know take drugs or alcohol mm-hmm. but like half of them died because they were like I'm gonna fight them yeah like I feel though that you could put like those army members or whatever regime they were in like they they specifically said like you remember in the beginning where like hey the doc says we have to try to like save him but. You know, you could really let loose. Like, they loved their job. They loved to, yeah. like, kill things and, like, be aggro. So you could say that they're, like, you know, their their crime is, like, that they love killing. Yeah, could. But so, so from what I did get, okay. fornicators, Stony, Low, Kinsa, and Janessa, if you remember who any of those characters are, congratulations. Freaking Stony brings him back to life. Like, their sex is the one that's just, like, I'm frozen. No, 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 I'm done frozen. Wow, teenagers having sex? I gotta get out of here and kill things. <laughs> the heat in their pants is heating my heart. Ah. And melting the ice. 
uh, and um, Lo was the, uh, the 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 professor, and Janessa had the sexy times with Professor Lo. So with That's futuristic nipple clamps, yeah. yeah, just that didn't look fun. No, but to someone it did. <laughs> uh, assholes, Doctor Wimmer and Azriel. Azriel was the guy that with the with the lopped off arm. Oh, nice. Yeah, he was fun. Uh, no one really uh, uh, drank or used drugs, except for like those virtual ones. The virtual, the yeah, virtual. Yeah, but the, they don't count. They don't because they're virtual. Yeah. Uh, then so, so everyone else that died, I'm not gonna list all of their names because one, you don't know them. Mm-hmm. The only reason why I know them is because I'm able to link them up to their deaths uh, on my list of who died. Uh, so whatever, everyone else that died is essentially an innocent. How was Jason defeated? Planetary reentry. Yes. I love that. <laughs> yes, yes. Earth's, that's that's the way to go. Yeah, Burn, theoretically burnt up in, in in Earth's atmosphere while being dragged down by its gravitational pull. And how does Jason come back? How do they tease the next one? They don't really. They show his mask. Yeah. And, like, if his mask could survive, then in theory the rest of them could have. Mm-hmm. But that's all we saw. We saw the mask, and then it cut to black for credits. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I guess you'd have to read the novelization to yeah. see if, like... Read the book, kids. Because I'm assuming that the novelization of that movie would set it up so they could do more novels. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, uh, one last bit of random trivia. Fun fact, as Ken lo- loves. I love the fun facts. Um... Jason never blinks in this movie. More specifically, his eyes are never closed hmm. at all. Whenever he, whenever the camera is on him, never closes his eyes. Surprise direction. It's a power move. It's a power move. It's it is. Michael supposedly I uh, I've I've since debunked this, but supposedly Michael Caine never blinks while he's on camera. I was about to say, did Edgar Wright just show up on set and start directing and <laughs> be like, Hey, no blinking. No yeah. blinking. I totally believe Kane Hodder came up with that idea because Kane Hodder is a fucking beast. Mm. If you've listened to the last four episodes, I do not stop praising Kane Hodder for his acting ability and what he brings to the table. His depiction of the character. Yeah, there's a reason why he is considered the best. Even though his four movies are also considered some of the worst, mm. he himself is considered the best. Well, you can't blame him for that because like, it's the, the B-plots, the... The supporting cast that and make the rock steadies, the rock steadies, the, <laughs> the bebop, <B-block>. rock steady. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, so that's that's Jason X. Ken, do you have anything else you want to say? Anything you want to plug? Well, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, overall, this movie was a ride. You know, yeah. I I really enjoyed it. Like, yeah. I I know that it it was campy, but like, I feel like it ended up being a fun kind of campy where it had these tropes of the series that. Just they played it out in the future, and that was kind of fun. You know, I I honestly enjoyed it. It was a great time. I I kept on having a voice for Jason every time he like was on screen. Where he like, there's this bit where like he slides into frame and just startles everybody, and it's literally like he doesn't walk over. He just slides. I'm like, oh hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> just kind of like a Kramer slide in. He's like, hey Jerry, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, no, this, this was a fun time. Like uh, maybe I'm not a, uh, maybe uh, like since I hadn't seen all of them or grew up with them or something and being a long You're fan. You're no aficionado. I'm not aficionado. I enjoyed it. It's a fun time. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. other, uh, other than that, you know, I got nothing to say. It was great fun. Yeah. I, I would recommend checking out the other movies, but, uh, they are, none of them are as fun as this one, mm-hmm. I would say. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. Jason take, uh, takes Manhattan seems uh, it seems to interest me. Like uh, I'm curious. Go for it. You're saying that the FBI is involved? Mm, no, no, no. They get involved in between movies. Oh, yeah. For Jason goes to hell. Yeah, yeah. And you're saying don't see that one? No, I'm not. I never said that. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying there's a lot of bad <laughs> that you gotta <laughs> that you gotta swim through to get to the good parts of Jason goes to hell. But mm-hmm. that was the first movie. That was the first Jason movie I ever saw. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Getting uh, getting kind of emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Brings a uh, tear to my eye. Yeah, uh, but uh, but yeah. So, well, thanks, thanks for coming on, Ken. Absolutely, you're uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this this concludes 
uh, this uh, this episode of The Long Night at Camp Blood. Uh, please join us next summer, and by next summer I mean next month, for Freddy vs. Jason. It's not even what it is. <laughs> this has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.